Okay, we are going to learn how to read an EKG strip. So here's some terminology that you will probably hear in the future working as a nurse when it comes to uh, reading EKG strips and understanding the uh, mechanisms and how the electrical pathways work um, in the heart. Some of these you probably already know. Some of those where you may have to look up. So, um, what's our approach to learning to read EKG strips? Well, the number one thing is basically you need to do it systematically. So, um, I use basically five steps in reading an EKG interpretation. And um, these are very basic steps. Once you learn how to do this, it makes sense. You can look at any EKG and in a matter of minutes kind of get an idea of what's going on. We are only going to look at um, a single strip, uh, meaning that we're not looking at a 12 lead. We just look at single strips. Um, this is very basic EKG reading. If you happen to get a job in telemetry or cardiac unit, then it will be required and you can take um, EKG readings on 12 leads, advanced EKG readings, things like that. But this is just a basic um, knowledge, basic information on how to read uh, 12 leads, or not 12 leads, sorry, single strips. So, everybody remembers the function of the heart from anatomy. So, basically, you know that you have the um, sinus node, you have the AV node, and down in the um, surrounding the ventricles, you have the um, bundle of His and the Purkinje um, fibers. A normal rhythm, a normal QRS, normal rhythm should begin in the sinus node. Works down through the AV node and then goes down to the ventricles. So if anything does not work that way, then it basically is a dysrhythmia, something is wrong. So the SA node. SA node is basically the pacemaker of the heart. All heartbeats should originate in the SA node. The normal heart rate of the SA node or the pacemaker is 60 to 100 beats per minute. So anything out of this range is tachycardia above 100 or bradycardia below 60. So you could be in a sinus rhythm. Sinus rhythm means that the uh, electrical impulse begins in the SA node and it goes down into the normal route of the AV and the Purkinje fibers. So um, you could be in sinus bradycardia. You could be in sinus tachycardia. So outside of this range, you could still be in a sinus rhythm, or they sometimes call it a normal sinus rhythm. Normal sinus rhythm would be 60 to 100. So um, that's basically where all heartbeats should begin. The AV node has a delay, which basically once that electrical impulse leaves the SA node, it runs down and it hits the AV node and it kind of slows down. There's a delay there from the electrical impulse of hitting the Purkinje fibers, the bundle of His, too quickly. So there's a delay, so that rate now slows down. The normal rate through the AV node is about 40 to 60 beats per minute. The reason it has to slow down is if it didn't slow down, there wouldn't be enough time for the ventricles to fill with blood. You need time for them to fill with blood, get ready for the contraction of the ventricles. So it slows down then 40 to 60 beats per minute is the normal rate um, going through the AV node. The bundle of His, that's the impulse now comes down through the AV node, it gets to the bundle of His, and basically um, that starts the ventricular contraction. If the bundle of His, because of some dysrhythmia, or if there is a block in the AV node, the bundle of His has the ability to self-initiate electrical activity. And it can do this basically to preserve um, cardiac function, but notice that rate would be 40 to 60 beats per minute. So let's say, for example, a patient 
has some kind of blockage or something's going on. And if you have a self-initiated uh, electrical rhythm that starts in the bundle of his, that normal rate's going to be 40 to 60 beats a minute. Well, some patients at that level wouldn't, um, they wouldn't be awake. Maybe they'd faint or they'd feel dizzy at a rate of 40 beats per minute. So down in the Purkinje fibers, there's a collection of fibers that now are going to collect and send that electrical impulse to the ventricles. Notice that rate is 20 to 40 beats per minute. Now you may be looking at that and thinking if the Purkinje fibers are carrying the electrical impulse, then why then is the QRS um, faster, meaning why is my heart beating at 100 beats a minute and not 20 and 40? Well, this basically has to do if there's a um, initiated dysrhythmia that's not normal that originates in the Purkinje fibers, that's the rate that it would be is 20 to 40 beats per minute. Same with the bundle of his. That's probably more than you need to know and want to know, so don't worry about it. So what can we learn from looking at an EKG strip? Well, we can look at the heart rate. It'll tell us the heart rate. It'll tell us whether the rhythm is regular or whether it's irregular. It'll also tell us the time intervals between um, that impulse leaving the SA node getting to the AV node. It'll tell us how long it takes the um, ventricle to contract? Is it too long? So it tells us basically the time intervals. There are normal time intervals when we have a normal heartbeat. So then it will also tell us because of that abnormal conduction pathways. Meaning where is the problem that the person, if they have a dysrhythmia, where is the problem? Um, so the electrocardiogram it's basically a graphic representation of your electrical activity of the heart. That's all it is. It's just basically electrical activity of the heart. Um, we can look at it, and that's what we use to see what's going on with the heart. So we can also print that out. Now we have a hard copy of the electrocardiogram or the rhythm strip. So here is what a normal QRS looks like. We call it a QRS complex because if the ventricle is involved, this is the normal thing it looks like. So notice right here we have, where I have the cursor, you have a P wave. So this P wave right there um, basically is when the atria contract. It contracts. So right here all of a sudden the atria contracts. So when you hear the lub dub of your heart beats, um, that first sound is the atria contracting. And it has this little electrical impulse. It bumps up on this wave line and that's called the P wave. So this interval right here from the P to the start of the Q is basically the atria contracting that electrical impulse moving down to the AV node. So there's a little pause here between the um, end of the P wave and the start of the QRS, and that's that slow process going through the AV node. Then the QRS, and it dips down, so we have a Q, this is a Q, this is the R, and this is the S. That basically is the ventricles contracting. Ventricles are bigger, it takes more electrical, um, there's more electrical activity, there are larger chambers, so consequently it's going to show a bigger um, electrical pattern on an EKG. So this is right here, the QRS, are the ventricles contracting. So you go along here, now there's another pause, and there's something called a T wave. This is the T wave. A T wave basically is um, the T wave is the QRS getting ready to have another contraction. So your electrolytes are rushing back into the cardiac cells and now we're getting ready for another contraction. There's enough cardiac cells in the ventricles that it causes it to have a bump here in your wave. So sometimes we call this the QT wave the start of the QRS to the end of the T wave. It's called the T wave, the QT wave. So we have a PR wave, we have a QRS, and now we have a QT wave. 
Remember we talked the last few weeks about patients that are low in potassium. If a patient is low in potassium, they will have what's called a U-wave. U-waves are not normal. A U-wave is another dip here before um, the electrical line goes back to baseline to start another PR. You got another dip here. That's caused by low potassium. If you have high potassium, you have what's called a peaked T wave. This is an example. See this T wave. If I had high potassium and it's high enough, that would spike up higher. It would almost look like another QRS. That's a sign of high potassium in the blood is a peaked T wave. Now on the electrocardiogram on the paper, here is what it looks like. You have basically bold red lines and between bold lead red lines are five little boxes. One, two, three, four, five. Each little box basically is 0 0.04 seconds. So the amount of time between a big red line and a second big red line is 0 0.2 seconds and that's how we're going to use and demonstrate and show whether we have an arrhythmia, whether this PR wave is too long, whether this QRS is too long, and that's how we find out what's going on if there's a heart problem. Each one that goes up is 0.1 millivolts. So you have time going horizontally and you have voltage going um, up and down. Here's another look at the very same thing showing these lines. So notice we have a PR interval right here. There it is right there. That's the start of the atria ending just before we have the QRS. So that's the atria contracting. There's a PR interval. Here's your QRS, little dip down on the QRS. Then it comes back up to your baseline. This is called your baseline or your isoelectric line of your EKG. Notice we can measure that off and say the segment of the end of the QRS and the T waves. So that's an ST segment. We could measure the Q when it starts the QRS to the end of the T wave. That's a QT interval. We could go up here and measure the R to R. That's an R to R interval. So we can look at any interval and figure out the time and what's happening with the heart. So remember, one square going left to right is um, 0 0.04. Okay, so the P wave. Now I just mentioned before that the P wave basically is your atria firing. So it's the SA node fires sends an electrical impulse down through the atria that causes them to contract. When something contracts, like the ventricles or the atria, it's called, it depolarizes. When it goes back to get ready for the next one, the electrolytes rush back in, it's called repolarization. The T wave is the repolarization of the ventricles. So this should be approximately 0 0.10 seconds in length. So here's your isoelectric line. It comes along. There's a little bump for there. That's called the P wave. That's the atria contracting. The PR interval I just mentioned before is basically that time where the SA node travels down to the ventricles. So it's not to the ventricle, it's got to go through the AV node and the bungalow hiss. But here's that little pause. Notice we now came down here, we are on the isoelectric line. After the P wave, there's just a very short um, isoelectric um, area. It comes back down to the line. That's before the contractions. These are happening in milliseconds.